So, I have a cat, and while he thinks he is the stealthiest thing in the world, sometimes he goes outside and I have no idea where he goes. He's out in the wild doing cat things, and it's just a complete mystery to me. So being an engineer, I thought, what if I could use a camera to track him as he walks around through my yard, my forest, using AI computer vision. Now I've already done this successfully for people to turn the lights on when people come home, and that's already been very handy. But how can I apply that to find my cat? So if you're interested in cats, security cameras, and computer vision, come along on this adventure. Sponsored by Reolink. So for some reference, here's a map I drew of my house, completely to scale. Inside we have the cat, Mr. Sherlock. He's hanging out. He's in charge of the place. We also have some trees. So over here we have the paper birch forest. And over here we have the arborvitaes. And I know he likes, he likes the arborvitaes. And he likes the paper birch forest. And he also just kind of likes sitting in the grass back here. So over here by the arborvitaes we have some cars. So you can see we're a big fan of electric cars here, so they kind of hang out over here. And he kind of hangs out over here and watches them from the arborvitaes. And I know when he goes over here, so I can see him. So over here is where the camera I already have is. So he can sit on the deck. I can watch him. He can sit on the barbecue grill, chairs, whatever. The camera doesn't track him that well, but I think it could be a combination of the resolution of this camera and the fact that I'm using a lower res stream for person detection. But this camera does work for detecting people. I've used it for that for a couple years. So what I can't see is over here. So it'd be nice if I had some camera over here where I could watch him roam, roam through the grass, the paper birches, have a good time being a cat. So to help with this project, Reolink sent over their Duo 3 PoE. This guy, he's the third generation of their dual sensor, very wide angle security camera. So this guy's got two 4K image sensors, each with a roughly 90 degree field of view, stitched together in software to give you a 16 megapixel, 180 degree field of view without the distortion of a normal fisheye lens. So that's how I can get these super wide view lines here to see my entire backyard and everywhere Mr. Sherlock could go. Also for this project, I'm gonna try out two different pieces of open source security camera software. Both of them feature AI-based object detection. So that is Frigate, which you've seen me use in another video, probably up here, and Viseron, which Hardware Haven showed in a recent video, so I thought I'd try it too. So now that we know the plan, let's get the camera set up. So here's the corner where the camera's gonna go. It's brick for about the first 20 feet or so, so I'm gonna have to go into the brick. I'm not that far from the power entrance and air conditioner, so I might be able to fish an ethernet cable through there, but it wouldn't look that great to run the wire along the brick. So I could also drill through the brick into the basement and run the wire that way. So decision made, I got out the Bosch hammer, my very favorite tool, got out the ladder, and I'm gonna drill through the brick. So I measured to find the height that'll land me in between the basement and the first floor. So I'll end up in the basement ceiling, climbed up the ladder, and drilled the hole. After drilling through the brick with the Bosch hammer, I got out a stupid long drill bit for the regular drill and drilled through the wood. Then I left the bit there so I could find it on the inside. After fishing the cable through the basement ceiling tiles, I found my drill bit. It's back there behind some of the insulation on the rim joist. So I just had to pull a little bit of that out, pull some more of the tiles out, and try to push the cable out. And here it comes through the hole in the brick. So I caulked the cable and then I pushed it back through a bit to make sure the caulk sealed the hole pretty well. After that, it's time to anchor the camera. Now the real link camera came with a mounting plate and a mounting arm, and it also came with drywall anchors and screws, but obviously those aren't gonna work into brick. So for this, I'm gonna have to use Tapcons and the Bosch hammer. With the holes drill, it was pretty simple to drive those Tapcons in. This thing is not going anywhere. So I attached the camera to the mount arm and then brought that whole assembly up to the top of the ladder to screw it onto the bracket. And now the camera's attached. At this point, I just have to cut the ethernet cable the length. This is a polyethylene jacketed UV rated outdoor cable that is a kind of a pain to work with. 
always have to look up the TIA 568B pinout every time I do this because I don't actually crimp wires that often. So I'd pulled the wire earlier, but I never terminated it into the patch panel. So now I've got my HDPE jacket wire hanging in the patch panel room, but I got it done. So as the sun was starting to set, I went back with the Bosch hammer and two Tapcons and screwed in some nice stainless steel cable brackets so that the cable won't flop around and it'll look nice. Now I can pull the ladder away and look at that. Nice clean install, relatively. So at that point, the only thing left to do is to put the Bosch hammer back away and put all the rest of the tools back in the frunk. And of course, set up the software. So now I'm gonna go through the camera setup in the Rio Link app. So here I have to agree to their terms and conditions to use the app. And so it found that camera already set up. Here's the camera. It's not initialized yet, so let's initialize it. So we need a password. Now it is good that it forces you to change your password. I know IoT security is pretty bad, but this is a, a small step. So this one's gonna be keyhole 10. So I just have it downstairs now, so let's go into settings. So if we go to network, we can see it supports IPv4. It has an address on the network. No IPv6 at all. As far as I can tell, Reolink doesn't support it. So our options are DHCP or static, and again, no IPv6. Down here in advanced, we have some other options. Um, so I'm gonna turn off UID because I don't want to use the Reolink cloud. I don't like that it was enabled by default. And then under server settings, I'm gonna enable HTTPS and RTSP and OnVIF. Okay, so I turned down the scaling on this monitor and now I can scroll down and see the save button. So now we can save that, so it succeeded. Now we have HTTPS on that port on our IPv4. So it does have a web UI even though it's disabled. So we can set all the same settings here. The UI is pretty much exactly the same. I don't know why they could enable this by default, but they didn't. For the spotlight, I decided to turn this off so it has built-in infrared lights and also built-in visible lights. So I turned off the visible lights and pretty much the other settings I just left as default. So I turned off the on-screen display because um, I forget it's going to add that. That's pretty much it. Oh, I also increased the bit rate here and lowered the frame rate. So now that the camera's set up, that leads me to the AI object detection part. And this bit was a lot trickier than I expected going into this project. So my first software of choice is Frigate, an open source network video recorder that does AI object detection video. I already put the video up there previously. So Frigate was originally based around the Google Coral TPU for AI acceleration, although now it supports other backends such as NVIDIA CUDA. But the model it uses by default is from Google TensorFlow. It's a TensorFlow Lite model trained on the Coco dataset. So Coco is a Creative Commons licensed set of training data for AI called Common Objects in Context. And it's a bunch of pictures of things that have been outlined by people manually. So you can train your AI on them. So I thought that this would not do a great job because it's TensorFlow Lite instead of full-on TensorFlow. And the model is a bit compressed to fit in the um, Coral TPU. So I want to try a better model. And the model I wanted to try was YOLO V7. Unfortunately, Frigate used to support YOLO v7, but removed it because Ultralytics, who now own YOLO copyrights, decided that a model trained in YOLO is somehow copyrighted to them um, using their AI legal assistant that replies to all the GitHub messages. So that's a big departure from the original YOLO license. So I turn to Viseron, or Viseron. Uh, this is another open source NVR. This one's much more plugin based than Frigate, so it has a lot more AI opportunities. You can do things like face detection, things like that. It's also a little bit less polished, and it's still in more active development, I think, than Frigate. Frigate's more complete. So with those two pieces of software chosen, I then set up my software. So here's the video I previously made on installing Frigate. So you can watch the video. I've already linked it a couple times. But basically, I go through all the steps here on how to install Frigate. It's a Docker container, so we use Podman Quadlet. I've got my Podman config. And I also set up reverse proxy with Caddy. And I also set up the Goral CPU. And I also set up, where is it? GPU decoding. So all of these things will help accelerate Frigate 
and make it not run like garbage because my hardware is a two core, two thread Intel Atom that can't really do anything. That uh, two core, two thread Intel Atom becomes very important later. So Viseron is pretty similar. They have a number of Docker images as well. They have some examples of Docker Compose and Docker that are honestly very similar to Frigate. So you have some directories we pass in, we have one port, and we need the Docker image. So for Viseron, I actually just did the same thing as Frigate, but I changed the word Frigate to Viseron, and I updated my container file just a little bit. I didn't need much. And that's how I installed Viseron. So I had both systems up and running, both of them able to record from the camera. At this point, everything started crashing and falling down. I was using the same Frigate instance that I use for the rest of my cameras. So I have five cameras that do, one of them does 4K, four of them do 1440p, a lot of them have a substream for analysis, so that's quite a few streams being decoded. And basically, Intel QuickSync on my little tiny Atom CPU could not decode this big ass 16 megapixel stream from the real camera, plus the existing cameras I already have. So I would have to go to CPU decode, but then the dual core Atom also couldn't CPU decode it, so it just fell over on itself and died. Similarly, the Ceron was unable to run with the resources I had in the system. So I moved to my test system, Megalab, the box computer. So over here at Megalab, I have two instances, Corona 2 and 3. One's running Frigate and one's running Viseron. And that's not actually an error, it just prints everything as an error for some reason. So due to this setup, I am now very CPU bound on the four core eight thread box PC. Running both of these at the same time on the 16 megapixel stream. But we're up and running, so I can look at the camera now and I can see absolutely everything. This is such a wide camera here. Um, and events have come in. There's some birds and some persons, and spoiler alert, that's not a bird and that's not a person. But we can take a look at what kinds of things it found. So that's a not a bird and that's not a bird. Um, the trend here is that a lot of things in nature look like birds, and they're not birds. I just have a ton of these to go through. But I did find a few good things. So here's a bird that is actually a bird. And here's a bird that's not a bird. And here's another bird that's not a bird. So I've also seen some people. So here's a clip of some people. It's me cutting the grass. I took that correctly. One thing we're missing though is cats. I looked through all of these footages to see if I could find a cat, and there was exactly one recording where a cat showed up, and he looks like a little brown blob screwing across the grass, so I can see why the AI didn't detect him, but at the same time I was kind of hoping that I would be able to track my cat with this. That was like the whole point of the video. So then I looked out the window and tried to find my cat manually, and I couldn't do it. it turned out he was sitting in the rocks within my field of view, but he just blends in because he is stealth. So that was my experience with Frigate, aside from eating a ton of my CPU, doing CPU AI detection, and also CPU decoding of an eight, uh, 16 megapixel stream. So yeah, how about Viseron? Viseron, what did it do? So it installed, the camera is running, what did we find? Nothing. Motion, so motion without analysis. At least it's not a false positive. Can I go back any further? I got seven events on this day. That's not very many. That is not a person. That is not a zebra. I don't know where you got a zebra from that. That is not a zebra. That is not a zebra. That is not a person. That is not a zebra. That's also not a person. So I thought the Yolo model would do better than the TensorFlow Lite model. Turns out they're both trained on the same Coco data set, which I knew going into it. And the Yolo model is not actually better at this. I also have Viseron doing motion detection and only recording on motion. And that's why I get so few recordings, but all of them were from zebras. I don't know how you turn a shadow into a zebra, but YOLO is turning shadows into zebras, and that's what Viseron reports. But aside from that, the camera worked great for tracking people. So every time a person walked through the backyard, 
Frigid found it, Frigid detected it, it was great. The camera also has a substream available at a lower resolution. If you just want to detect people, they're much larger than cats, so you don't need such a high resolution stream for AI analysis. And that can really help your CPU load compared to decoding the 16 megapixel high res stream and run that through AI. So, my second attempt to track my cat has failed. First attempt was using one of those GPS collars, but uh, he's a smart guy, he doesn't want big tech tracking his every move. So he went out in the middle of the road and took it off. Left it there for me to find. Now despite my cat's ability to be perfectly stealthy at all times, the real Link Duo 3 still performed pretty well. I tried to show you in this video just how wide the footage is. I've zoomed in on different parts if you go back and watch. And tried to zoom out to show you just to get a sense of scale for how wide this camera is. It can pretty much see everything. So for me to record from that location where I set this camera up, I probably would have needed two cameras maybe more to get that sort of field of view with two cameras looking at 90 degrees to each other or something like that. That would have meant more wiring, more cameras, etc. I am still a big fan of using outdoor cameras like this for motion detection and object detection. So you can have a camera like this detect if there's a person or a car or something like that, turn on your exterior lights, things like that. That works much better than using an outdoor motion sensor like a PIR sensor. Now the camera does have built-in person detection and it can tag footage in the app if you use the Rio Link app. It has a built-in micro SD card slot, so it can record locally if that's all you need. But it also supports power over Ethernet, so you can have a single wire for power and data. I really appreciate this because PoE is what everything should be using. I hate wireless technologies that batteries always let me down. Because it is powered, that means it can record continuously if you wanted to without draining the battery. You could record on the camera or you could record on your NVR like I've done with Frigate. It also has enough power to offer both IR and visible white LEDs. You can turn them on from the app. You can set them to automatically come on during motion or at night or things like that. And of course, it supports standard protocols like RTSP, so we can use whatever MVR we want. So from here, I'm probably gonna take the Duo 3 and add it back into my original camera system, but at a lower resolution. So I can enable the substream, like it has a mainstream and a substream. And if I do analysis on the substream, that shouldn't overload my little atom. I can still record the mainstream, but do detection based on the substream, and that's good enough for people. And who knows, maybe I'll get more into AI in the future, maybe something like face recognition or face detection. That could be a fun way to unlock my door, for example. Let me know if you'd like to see that in the comments below. Once again, thanks to Reolink for sponsoring this video. If you guys have any suggestions for me, feel free to write them in the comments down below. You can always message me on Discord too, I love that, join my Discord community. If you want to give me a tip, my Kofi is also down in the link below. And as always, I'll see you guys in the next adventure.